Hello, and welcome to The Conversation at airsafe.com, sponsored by Speed Break Publishing. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Curtis, the creator of airsafe.com, your reliable source of airline safety and security information since 1996. In this conversation, I'd like to discuss the latest official update from the investigation into the crash of a British Airways 777 at London's Heathrow Airport on the 17th of January, 2008. Although the aircraft was substantially damaged by the crash, there was only one serious injury among the 136 passengers, and no serious injuries among the 16 crew members. This was a scheduled international flight from Beijing, China to London, England. The flight was routine until about two miles from touchdown. The engines would not respond to commands to increase thrust, and as a result, the aircraft touched down about a thousand feet short of the runway. The Air Accidents Investigation Branch of the UK's Department of Transport is the lead agency in this investigation. They released an initial report about their investigation on the 18th of January, a day after the accident, and a second update on the 23rd of January. In the initial report, the AIB stated that the flight was normal and uneventful until the aircraft was on final approach for runway 27 left. At about 600 feet above the ground, the auto throttle system commanded an increase in engine thrust to maintain the aircraft's flight path angle. The engines did not respond to this command, and also did not respond when the crew manually commanded an increase in thrust. During a standard approach, the aircraft is flown at a shallow 3 degree flight path angle. The pilot flying, in this case the first officer, increased the flight path angle after the engines failed to respond to thrust commands. The aircraft cleared the airport's perimeter fence before landing in the grassy area short of the runway. The second AAIB update from the 23rd of January provided additional details about the behavior of the aircraft. During final approach, the engines initially responded to auto thrust commands to increase thrust. The right engine thrust reduced about three seconds after this command, and about eight seconds later, thrust on the left engine reduced to similar levels. The engines continued to produce thrust above flight idle, but below the commanded level. Recorded data indicate that there was adequate fuel, that the auto throttle and engine controls performed as expected prior to and after reduction of thrust. The AIB continues to look at all scenarios that could explain thrust reduction, as well as scenarios that would explain the lack of response to throttle level inputs. The AIB is also performing a detailed analysis and examination of the complete fuel flow path from the aircraft tanks to the engine fuel nozzles. The AIB is also closely cooperating with Boeing, Rolls-Royce, and British Airways, all of whom have representatives within the investigation team. The investigation is still in its earliest stages, and many possible explanations for the accident still exist. The investigation may exclude some possibilities, but further investigation may reveal others. Given the current direction of the investigation, it's more likely that there may be issues with multiple systems involving failures, unexpected behavior, or inadequate, inappropriate, or missing procedures. Keep in mind that the system failure may occur in many ways, including situations where the system performs as expected, but fails to achieve a desired result. The observations made in the previous podcast about the challenges facing the AAB in analyzing this accident are still relevant. Accidents that occur because of system-related problems are usually a combination of technological and human factors issues. It may be difficult to recreate the conditions associated with the accident, in part because some relevant environmental or system conditions may not be well understood. System-related problems may be due to subtle and complex interactions within and between systems and their human operators. Understanding those interactions can be a long and difficult process. The suggestions made in the previous podcast about how to evaluate what's being published about the investigation are also still valid. If you're interested in following what is said about the investigation online or in the news media, keep this in mind. Prior to the completion of the investigation by the AAIB, those outside of the investigation, including aviation safety experts and the largest news media organizations, will have access only to a fraction of the relevant information. The AAIB will likely provide several more updates prior to publishing a final report, and these updates represent the most authoritative source of information about the ongoing investigation. Finally, take the time to read between the lines and figure out what is fact and what is speculation. If you're interested in following the 777 investigation, or if you're interested in other aviation safety or security issues, you can check out the following resources. For more on the 777 investigation, visit 777.airsafe.org. If you want to provide feedback about this podcast, visit feedback.airsafe.org. For other airline safety and security podcasts, visit podcast.airsafe.org. 
Background information about the site and the site's creator, Dr. Todd Curtis, is available at media.airsafe.org. I'll be back with some final thoughts after this brief message. If you have a serious interest in the study of aviation safety, one of the key skills you have to have is the ability to analyze data. My book, Understanding Aviation Safety Data, might be the perfect tool for that job. Based on my experiences from analyzing thousands of incidents and accidents, this book has detailed step-by-step -step procedures for asking and answering the 12 basic kinds of aviation safety questions you're likely to encounter. To find out more about the book, visit Speedbrake Publishing at orders.speedbrake.com. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Before we end this conversation, I'd like to remind all my listeners that this podcast is produced by the airsafe.com foundation, a nonprofit organization that supports a number of efforts to further the public's understanding of aviation safety and aviation security. For more information about the foundation or to make a tax-deductible donation, please visit airsafe.org. For more information about airline safety, you can find us at airsafe.com. That's a i r s a f e.com or type the words airline safety into your favorite search engine. We're probably on the first page of results. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.